Hey guys, what's up? It's been just over two weeks now since Apple released the iPhone 6 and the 6 Plus. Um, and in that time, there's been some record breaking highs and a few iPhone bending lows. So, is bigger really better? Let's find out. Okay, so here's a size comparison of the iPhone 6 alongside an iPhone 5 and an iPhone 3GS. So as you can see, it's significantly larger than any previous iPhone models. Um, however, it's also a lot thinner as well. Uh, in fact, it's the thinnest iPhone um, that has been released so far. Um, some people have made comments about the back camera because it protrudes uh, a couple of millimetres. Um, when you lay the iPhone 6 on a flat surface it does create a little bit of wobble um, but nothing too bad. It's only really when you press down on the top left hand corner that you notice it. Okay so Setting up the iPhone 6 for the first time is um, similar to um, previous iPhone models. So first of all you select your language. Uh, then you select your country or region. Then you're given the option to connect to a Wi-Fi network. Okay, so I'm just going to skip ahead while I input my Wi-Fi password. Okay, so once you're connected to your Wi-Fi network, you're then given the option of enabling location services. Um, setting up your iPhone 6, um, you can either set it up as a new iPhone, restore from iCloud backup or restore from iTunes. So once you're signed in with your Apple ID, you can choose to use iCloud to sync your photos and music. You can also enable Find My iPhone. Next, you can um, just confirm your um, iMessage settings. And then you can also choose to use iCloud Drive. So then you'll be asked to set up um, the ID sensor. So you do this just by repeatedly pressing down on the ID sensor. Then you can create a passcode. Is
you're then given the option of using Touch ID for iTunes and App Store purchases. You can set up an iCloud keychain to store your passwords. You can enable Siri. You're given the choice of sending diagnostics data to Apple. Okay, Display Zoom is new to the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus and it basically scales up the dis display and as you can see it gives you a few um, uh, previews of, of how that will look if you, uh, if you choose to um, upscale the display and then setup is complete Okay, so if the first thing you notice about the iPhone 6 is the increase in screen size, probably the second thing you'll notice when you pick it up is just how light this phone is. Um, it's um, incredibly light, incredibly thin. Okay, so taking a quick look around the iPhone 6, on the left hand side you have the hold button, volume up and down buttons. On the bottom of the phone you have the headphone jack, lightning connector and the microphone. On the right hand side you have the nano sim and the power button which is moved from the top of the unit which is where it was found on previous iPhones. On the back we have the camera, autofocus sensor and the flash. And on the front we have the home button and touch ID sensor. Okay, so in use, the iPhone 6 um, is uh, noticeably larger than uh, any previous iPhone models. Um, it did take me a little bit of getting used to. Um, as you can see, um, I did have to keep sort of rebalancing the, the phone in my hand to reach certain parts of the screen, which is something that I didn't really have to do with the iPhone 5S. Um, but to be honest, it's it's not a big issue. I've, I've gotten used to that quite quickly. Um, just for a comparison, if I um, show you, um, so here's my iPhone 5S, and um, it's just a lot easier to reach um, different parts of the screen uh, without having to sort of keep rebalancing the phone. So if you're moving up from a previous iPhone to the iPhone 6 then you know there will be that little bit of adjustment that you have to get used to but it's not a big deal. In fact that's the main reason why I decided against going for the iPhone 6 Plus because I feel that that would just be too big to use comfortably with, with one hand.